挽回、残下の立ち。With the release of the anime adaptation of the Thousand Year Blood War arc, there were various implementations which changed up a few things. One of the things that was changed was the fight between Yuha and Yamamoto. Last year, I released a video where I discussed Yamamoto's Bankai, which was displayed in his fight against Yuha. Within the video, I attempted to understand how his Bankai works, alongside laying out various problems concerning it and possible solutions to these problems. Since that video was based purely on chapters 507 to 509 of the manga, And episode six of the anime differed in various aspects. I decided to correct various claims I made within that video while reaffirming certain stances. Do note that while I refer to him as Yuha, the person Yamamoto is fighting isn't Yuha, if not Roy Lloyd. With that being said, let's begin. The first claim I'll be correcting concerns his east and west abilities. His east ability allows him to focus all of his flames into the tip of his zampakuto, which results in anything that is touched by the tip to be obliterated. His west ability cloaks his body in. Flames that are said to have a temperature of 15 million degrees Celsius. In the manga, Yamamoto activates his East ability first, and Yuha would claim that he just has to defeat Yamamoto by not allowing his blade to touch him. Yuha then goes to strike Yamamoto with his blade, but his blade is erased from existence. With Yamamoto saying, "Where there is East, there is West," as he follows up by saying he will make it visible to Yuha. The it he is talking about is his West ability, which is where he dons the fiery cloak. He also says when he uses his bankai, think of his body and sword as being enveloped by the sun. This led me to claim that whenever Yamamoto activates his east ability, his west ability is also activated in tandem. It's just that it is invisible, with Yamamoto voluntarily making it visible to Yuha. However, in the anime, this doesn't seem to be the case, as Yuha kicks Yamamoto and doesn't say anything. But when he later attacks him with his sword, it is completely destroyed. Yamamoto also attacks the stone Yuha throws at him, as opposed to just letting them get obliterated. Rated by his cloak. While there are some other reasons that can be given, I won't go into them here as it isn't necessary. This leads me to believe that both of these abilities aren't activated at the same time. If not, when Yuha attacked Yamamoto with his sword, Yamamoto activated the ability and decided to make it visible to Yuha afterwards so he could display and explain it. The second claim I made is that his East ability can erase anything it touches. Many Bleach scalers use this statement alongside the seemingly uniform, smooth, and particle-less destruction created by the East ability to assert that it has existence erasure and that the destruction does. Doesn't even leave atoms behind. I also claim this in my video, but in the addendums posted in the comments section, I explain how I don't think this was meant literally. My argument was that the immense concentration of heat caused the attack to maybe separate things on a molecular level, which gives the illusion of existence erasure. With just the manga, I can see why many Bleach scalers wouldn't really agree with this argument. I myself didn't really try to push it too hard for the same reason. I just wanted to put into question whether it was actually removing things from existence. But now that the anime came out, it shows quite clearly that it isn't removing things from existence. If not, it's just obliterating things into incredibly minute particles and fragments. This confirms the idea that Yamamoto was speaking somewhat figuratively. Or that the extent to which he meant it wasn't on the level many interpreted it as. The third correction isn't really a claim. If not, it is just something that confuses me. In the manga, it is made apparent that Yamamoto activating his bankai was emitting some kind of thermal radiation, drying out all water in the Soul Society. Yamamoto then activates his West ability, which cloaks his body in flames that have a temperature equivalent to that of the core of the sun. If this is the case, I ask myself. Why wasn't the air, ground, or any other surrounding object being affected? The radiation emitted by this cloak should be powerful enough to cause the ground, air, and surrounding structures to phase change. But in the manga, we don't see any of this. Well, in the anime, this is partially addressed as when Yamamoto activates his West ability, the ground he stands on begins to melt, and after some time, we see a flower go up in flames. But this doesn't really explain why nothing happens to the air and surrounding structures. You could make some crazy rationales, like they have a phase change point that is near or above that of 15 million degrees Celsius, but that is dubious in various ways. What is most likely the case is that there isn't an in-universe explanation that would encompass the aforementioned, and the author just didn't consider or wasn't fully knowledgeable on the physics of the situation. It also may be that he was, 
and just decided to discard them in pursuit of artistic liberty. If it's the latter, the in-universe entailment would just be that the physics are different for things like this and we can go on to try and explain how it might work but I'm not out for all of that. However, before I move on, I'd like to posit something interesting. What if Yamamoto's cloak is in an actual flame, if not just spiritual pressure that feels like flames? Allow me to explain. In my first video, I somewhat touched on this but it was in a different and more convoluted manner. You see, when Yamamoto says his cloak of flames has a temperature of 15 million degrees celsius, we are shown Jugram who makes some interesting observations. He says it is impossible for such an immense amount of heat to be visible as flames. He questions whether it is an illusion before hypothesizing that perhaps his spiritual pressure is so overwhelming that it looks like flames as it bursts out of him. At first, I thought this was just the author making some physics acknowledgement on why such an immense amount of heat can be seen as flames with the explanation being that it is Yamamoto's spiritual pressure in the form of flames. You know, like how all his other attacks are but also aren't flames. They are his spiritual pressure in the form of flames. It's how it's manifested. It's just like how a sero is a beam of spiritual pressure or energy. It is one of the ways hollows can manifest their spiritual energy. But as I wrote this script, I began to look at it in a different light. What if this is the author trying to say that Yamamoto is lying in a sense? Like, what if what we see actually aren't flames with a temperature of 15 million degrees Celsius? If not, what if Yamamoto's spiritual pressure is so powerful and intense that his west ability surrounds him in his spiritual pressure which looks and feels like flames but aren't actually flames. This is why Yuha states that it feels as if he is burning. What I'm thinking is that this is one of those effects of immense spiritual pressure. You should check out my first video on this channel if you want to learn more about the specifics of what I mean. But basically, spiritual pressure can work like actual pressure acting on one's body which can create effects such as fatigue to outright driving others unconscious. The West ability also weaponizes Yamamoto's spiritual pressure causing it to work as if he is clothed in immensely hot flames but all of the effects aren't actually there. This would mean that the radiation felt by Yuha is, but also isn't, real thermal radiation. It isn't real in that inanimate objects aren't feeling it or being affected by it as if it were a real flame. It is real in that the feeling and intensity of the radiant heat due to spiritual pressure is being or can be felt. Thus, if Yuha were to deactivate blood vene, he might actually be cremated due to the sheer intensity of the flames. However, it could also be the case that he wouldn't be turned to ash and the belief that he would be is merely a feeling born through Yamamoto aiming his spiritual pressure which was manifested in a unique manner at him. It's kind of confusing but the gist of it is that it isn't like there's actual fire as hot as the core of the sun radiating heat omnidirectionally. If not, it's more like it's Yamamoto's spiritual pressure manifested in a unique manner by his west ability. The exact nuances of how it works is up to discussion. Maybe it is just an illusionary sensation. Maybe the sensation is real and will have actual effects on certain spiritual beings. For example, Yuha who Yamamoto may be aiming it at. The cloak itself is real and has the ability to basically erase things from existence. This doesn't mean it has existence erasure of course as explained previously. But if this is the case or something similar to it is, then it explains why everything around him doesn't phase change. It also explains the flames in the battlefield and how they don't necessarily behave like an actual flame would. Like they seem to spread out and harmlessly attach themselves to the ground and buildings in the surrounding without causing much destruction. This could also be something supporting the argument that they are more illusionary than real. Yuha also mentioned the flames in a somewhat strange manner as if they were unusual but this may be in reference to something else. We also see the flames reflected in the eyes of Jugram and Yuha in somewhat unusual shots. They could have just been for a nice cinematic shot but they could also have a deeper meaning, maybe alluding to the fact that it may be illusionary. The one problem with this is that it doesn't explain why the ground below Yamamoto does phase change. I have many possible explanations for this. Maybe it is a faculty of the ability where the ground directly below Yamamoto turns to lava which he is immune to. This would be a cool and purely cosmetic effect. It wouldn't make sense for this to be due to the thermal radiation from flames that have a temperature of 15 million degrees celsius as the ground would do more than just turning to lava. Again, this is unless you want to argue that it has some crazy high 
vaporization points. Another explanation would be that maybe Yamamoto activated some sort of ability that allowed him to readily fly via heat propulsion. I say this because this effect doesn't happen the instant he activates this ability. If not, sometime afterwards where we see some kind of effect around his feet. Additionally, when he does propel himself in the air later on, it looks as if the lava below is pushing him upwards slightly. Another reason it wouldn't really make sense for this to be due to thermal radiation is because this only happens directly below Yamamoto's feet. To account for this not happening even a few meters away from him, you'd have to argue that the fall off range for the intensity of the radiation is unimaginably short. If you argue that, you'd be inadvertently arguing that the thermal energy needed to even melt the ground 2 meters in front of Yamamoto is greater than that which is needed to turn Yuha into ash without blood veining. This also has other problems as I laid out in the beginning such as with the air and the surrounding buildings. All in all, this cloak radiation actual immense heat is unreasonable because of the countless problems we run into. I feel that the illusionary argument, while it may not be wholly accurate to what is exactly happening, is more reasonable and something within that vein is actually happening. With that being said, we can move on to the fourth correction which is like a set of different claims I made. In both the anime and manga, it was also made evident that if Yamamoto didn't quickly finish the fight, the entire soul society would have been destroyed or turned to ash. Furthermore, Yamamoto states that he would also die if he didn't quickly finish the fight. Thus I questioned how was Yamamoto going to destroy the soul society and how would he die? Within my other video, I proposed various answers. One of them was that Yamamoto was going to destroy the soul society by means of thermal radiation. When he activates his Bankai, I argued, he would have transferred so much thermal radiation to all objects in the soul society that the entire planet would have been vaporized. It would be like concentrating the sun into a small orb and placing it on earth. The reason this didn't happen instantaneously and why nothing other than water was being affected is because Yamamoto was restricting what his thermal radiation was being transferred to. But there is a limit on how many things he can restrict this transfer to. Additionally, I propose that maybe all the heat that wasn't being transferred due to Yamamoto restricting it was somehow building up within him. After some time, this buildup would have reached its limit and it would have been released violently, killing Yamamoto and everything else. While this explanation does answer the questions, it isn't fully satisfactory and makes very wild assumptions. This explanation can be modified in various ways and, as said previously, within my video I presented some other explanations but they were all unsatisfactory and purely speculatory. I have another explanation which is similar to one I touched on in my other video. It goes that the heat was uniformly spread across the entire soul society and was hot enough to vaporize small amounts of water but not hot enough to significantly harm anything else. Somewhat similar to the heat of an oven. As time went on, the temperature would have continuously risen until it became hot enough to destroy everything in sight. This makes sense with how water was slowly evaporating but nothing else was happening. But after some time, we see a flower burst into flames. Something I'd like to remind everyone of and that I myself looked over with my other video was that the radiation or immense heat began prior to Yamamoto activating his west ability and the claims about him going to die if he doesn't end the fight quickly are in reference to him wielding his Bankai as opposed to a specific ability. So thinking that the radiation was due to or affected by the immense heat of the cloak is flawed. We should think that this was just a part of his Bankai. Thus, while I rejected it in my first video, it is very plausible that just using his Bankai can kill him without having something to do with immense heat. Maybe his body temperature continuously increased while he is using his Bankai to the point he would eventually be burned to nothing. Maybe he would just explode after some time due to his Bankai being too powerful or something. This explosion could maybe be great enough that it erases the entire city take off the map with a massive crater. The shockwave and other effects of this explosion may destroy the soul society in a manner somewhat similar to the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event caused by the Chicxulub asteroid. Using a similar explanation as before, maybe when he activates his Bankai, there's just a dome of limited size that's like an oven. As time goes on, the size and temperature of this zone increases. Maybe it starts off slow but rapidly accelerates. Eventually, it would have covered the whole soul society destroying everything. Maybe this proposed dome or furnace covers the whole surface of the planet but doesn't become so hot that it destroys everything. If not, it is just too hot to sustain any life and things begin to die rapidly. After trees, plants and things of that nature all lose their moisture, 
they burst into flames just like how we saw with the flower. As stated previously, maybe what kills the soul society is just a massive explosion that doesn't destroy the entire planet, if not, just makes it uninhabitable. When you get into the real specifics of how it may work, there are endless explanations one can give. But I feel as if though the global furnace and eventual massive explosion explanations make more sense and are the most consistent while resorting to less rationality and assumption. Moving on to the final correction I'll make, which is whether or not Yamamoto scales to his Bankai. While you can say his Bankai scales anywhere between country to continent level all the way up to universal, I'm not here to discuss that. I wrote an addendum, which you can find in the comments, of how I feel about where it scales. What I want to answer is whether or not he himself scales to it, as in can he punch, kick, attack you with his sword or normal flames with the same or comparable level of energy as is released in the destruction of the soul society in whatever way it would be destroyed. In my video, I said yes. But then in the comment section, I explained how I wasn't satisfied with that answer since I just said it because it was the most obvious thing to say and I didn't arrive at that conclusion through meticulous and rigorous analysis as is my nature. I wrote a very extensive paragraph and ultimately concluded that he doesn't scale to it but it doesn't matter because while he wields his west ability, any attack he hits you with its planet level. I said this because I was of the belief that the mere radiation of those flames that cloaked him possessed enough power to completely destroy the soul society. It then follows that the flames which cloaked his body had power vastly surpassing their radiation. Thus, his attacks would be massively above planet level while using it. I also stated that Yuha somewhat scaled to the radiation given how close he was to Yamamoto. So even if Yamamoto didn't scale to his flames, he scaled to Yuha who scaled to their radiation which was planet level at the very least. With everything I discussed within this video, I do not believe I need to explain why I no longer agree with this. My stance on the radiation and flames and how they work has changed. And with that, I see no reason as to why he would scale to basically anything here. In this video here, I explain why I differentiate the idea of attack potency, destructive capability, and attack power. I also explain why just because you did something via an ability does not mean you now scale to that thing done by your ability. To clarify, when I say scale to, I mean being able to punch, kick, and withstand those levels of energy. Basically, it means you are capable of imparting that same level of energy onto a single target or withstanding it from a single attack. A quick example would be, just because I froze the ocean doesn't intrinsically entail that I can attack or withstand multi-continent levels of energy. There has to be some additional reason as to why I would scale to that feat. I believe the heat everyone is feeling is similar to that of an oven or furnace and it is an intrinsic effect of Yamamoto's Bankai. But there is nothing to scale here. The way in which the soul society will be destroyed is dubious and in all the explanations I gave, there is nothing to scale to. This is unless you can scale the hypothesized explosion or radiation to Yuha who will scale back to Yamamoto. Everything we see in this fight seems to just be a display of the various hexes or abilities possessed by Yamamoto with there not being anything to scale to. And yeah, that's about it for this video. It came out to be way longer than I expected. I was expecting it to be like a 10 to 15 minute video at most, but it became this. Before I go, do check out the addendums in the comment section below. I believe that they are quite interesting and talk about things that I didn't touch on here, but relate to his Bankai and his scaling. So yeah, bye.